what we're chatting through today is a real client strategy. So we're always talking specific properties and looking at points in time around strategy, but it's important to understand how we actually work with you over your life, over the life of your property investing, taking into account the changes in your circumstances. We all know the accumulation phase is the hardest phase, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you stop accumulating through the journey, but what this is more around a um, maintain and hold section. When there's been a life circumstance change, what we do next, in this case, you know where these clients are looking to relocate, and how we approach everything that we're doing to maximize the outcome, working with the client to help them achieve their goals. So we've uh, no names in this, the, the numbers are fairly generic, but the, it's a true case, and I'll come back to more of that um, at the end. So quick update on the circumstances. So these, they're currently rent vesting, so they're renting um, in New South Wales and uh, looking to move in 2025, change of roles. Um, they've got some good savings, cash at bank. They've already got a, an investment property um, that is actually a duplex that's about 10 years old, hasn't performed uh, great. Um, but there is a couple of hundred K of equity um, in there. Um, they've got a townhouse that has done really well. That's got about 400 K of equity, but these properties are, they've held for around 10 years. They're currently um, investing now with us in a house and land and a townhouse, both being built now, both with some really good equity. The house should complete um, in early 2024, um, just a guide. Um, the townhouse probably um, at the start of 2025. So what we're looking at is, th with this circumstance, how is the best to position them to um, do more, to maximise their cash flow? They've milked all they can out of the um, um, tax man here from their depreciation, etc., um, and then setting them up for the future. So part of the discussions and understanding the client's needs and, and wants, we've looked at timing. So, yep, could they sell these now? But we also need to take into account how they're gonna be positioned in 25 to buy an owner occupier to, if they're gonna sell some of these to purchase and because what we're looking at doing is using that, so selling down these properties so that we've got the least amount um, of borrowings as we can when they purchase their PPR here. So in doing that, obviously they're gonna have some capital gains tax, but we're, we're looking at, you know, what is the, the climate looking like? So if you look at um, what rates are doing, so there's a general consensus view that rates will come down and be, um, so the cash rate will be in the early to sometime in 25, possibly start dropping late 24, um, and we'll see where they go in 26. But also um, what we believe is, that prices will continue to rise and we'll probably see the next peak. And by peak, we're not talking about market coming back. We're talking about a significant rise in prices over that time. We've already seen prices continue to rise through 2023. Don't worry about medians. Prices have continued to rise. Short version is there's not enough homes for all the people who want to live in Australia, particularly here on the Sunshine Coast where we're talking around some of the strategy um, is there, you know, we're never now going to meet um, demand through supply through a whole range of factors, get the research report if you want to know more on that. Um, so, so some good uplift, some good opportunity to do more and maximize that opportunity through here. Lending should be a bit easier in here. Hopefully will be some easement on after assessment rates. The government will understand that property investors are the actual solution to the rental crisis and they'll provide other incentives, but making some fairly reasonable assumptions. So what we're then looking at here is um, selling these two properties um, in 25 prior to their purchase to release the cash. So by then, you know, we'd, we'd expect there'd be about 250K equity and we actually believe there'll be about 500 equity um, in this property here. So 750 plus cash at bank, they're looking pretty good um, for their owner occupier property and what they're looking at doing. Just a key thing on this is when we're looking at structuring this, because obviously any lending against this and we wanna maximize the opportunity in the cash to do more, um, we'll look for a redraw facility on this and an offset account against it. So all rental property income comes into the offset, all of their earnings go into the offset, all their savings in the offset. Um, so that any lending that they've got here, which um, we're about to talk about, will be now be tax deductible debt. 
um, using to purchase further properties, um, but we're also creating a redraw facility. So what we're trying to do is make it as easy as possible to continue to build going into the future. These guys um, are still very young. They've still got a long, long time um, before retirement. So we're looking at how we continue to grow if that's what they want to do going forward. With these properties here, when this one's completed, we believe there'll be about 125K of equity. To be fair, there's 100K of equity in it today based on the demand for completed properties. So the price between um, this house, um, sorry, this will be about 150, we believe, and about 125, maybe more. Um, so there's already 100K equity in this property between the completed property price, what they're selling for today, and what we're building for off the plan. So this is all pretty reasonable. Um, so the first thing we looked at was timing, probably hold these, but they've also got capacity now. So they've actually um, now building. So these three, the, the, these are all, these two are under construction. This is about to start. Another house, a two bedroom house, that'll complete somewhere around here. There's already 80K equity in this property. So, you know, let's call it 100K, um, probably more. So when you, you start looking at, across here and you're talking about three hundred seventy-five to four hundred thousand dollars of equity just in this portfolio that they've created by the time they get to this position in 2025. So now they've sold down these properties. Yes, they've had to pay some capital gains tax, um, but they put that in there. They, they've got good cash savings that they put in there. Even if they're lending, it's not a lot. And now we're going to focus on paying that lending down through the use of an offset account and where all their income's coming. So what we do then is, is we talk about doing an equity unlock. Um, from this, now, this cash is now sitting in here and we're looking at doing an equity unlock to purchase another property or another two properties, one that would complete here, one that would complete in 2026. Keeping in mind, we've also got um, almost $400,000 of equity or probably $400,000 or more equity by the time we get here, plus another completed property, plus very high cash flow out of these properties. So as we talked about, and we talked about at the end of 2022, when everyone said the world is ending, the property market is going to come back and it's going to be terrible in 2023. And we said prices will continue to rise, which they did. And we're getting ready for this next wave, um, which we talked about in 2022. I suspect that in 2026, we're going to be having similar conversations where people are going to be saying the world is ending um, once they wake up that the market has slowed from a macro point of view. And all we'll be saying is now's the positioning for the next wave. We cannot build enough property in this country, and particularly in this city, in our lifetime. There, those with property will continue to make more money. The divide between the haves and the haves not is going to grow and property is going to be key in that. So when you have people competing with everything they can for somewhere to live in this country, um, the, the opportunity going forward. So not only are they replacing what they had and with better performing properties, they're positioned to continue to do more. So they've been working with us for a, a number of years um, or 10 years. <laughs> um, and so when you look at where we're going over the next 10 years, there is so much more that can be achieved and that we can do. And this is what we do. When we talk about check navigating, when we talk about walking the journey with you, this isn't a, a beautiful statement to get you to buy a property that we're trying to sell um, to put food on the table. This is what we do. And the key thing about that, and this is the last point I'll leave you on, before you talk to your property coach around your strategy and what you should be doing, especially in this time, even if you've been sitting on your hands for a bit trying to understand what's going on, you've got some capacity, this is what we do. And the key thing that these guys said, and we're going to actually get a testimonial video um, from them soon. But in their email, when I said, can we share your strategy? They said, of course you can. All we have is because of you. This is what we exist for. Let us help you talk to your property coach today.